Hello, hello, amigos, amigas. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, maybe. That might depend on where you are in the world. Buenos días, uh, good day, good morning for me, because it's 11.14 a.m. in the morning here in Lima, Peru. Thank you so much, amigos. Thanks for visiting Lima today. Thanks for visiting me virtually today. I have something different for you. It's the beginning of a new series that I called Visiting the Neighborhoods of Lima. In each occasion, we're going to visit a different part of the city. My intention with this series of tours is showing you my city. I promise we will not always see very posh and elegant parts of Lima. Sometimes we're going to see all the types of realities, but to show you the true beauty of the city. So thank you so much for your participation. Let me say hi to everybody that is here. Hola amigos, hola Adrian, hello, hello. Como están? Hi, thank you so much for coming. Hi Eve, thank you, thank you. Yes, good morning, oh, buenos dias. <laughs> so well, today we will see a wonderful district. Uh, I've come in several occasions with other uh, tours I've done for Hago to Barranco, but in this uh, occasion in particular, we are going to see uh, the architecture. I usually focus more in history, like in the history of the districts or in the past days of, of the, the districts we visit. But today we're going to see, it's going to be very visual, we're going to see architecture. So I hope that you enjoy this, this new series. I hope you enjoy today's tour. Thanks for, for coming today and uh, for your support especially. Um, so if you are ready, I am more than ready for you all. And we are going to start exploring the different architectural styles of Lima, but focusing more in the 20th century. We're going to see the development of Lima uh, as, a, as a big, busy city um, in the in the early 1910s, 1920s, 1930s, but also sometimes we're going to go even back in time a little bit more. So, well, hi, Darla. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for, for being here today. So, well, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Give me a heart if you can. Anything you have handy, just to know that you are ready to begin with me. Muy bien, eh? Thank you. Thank you. So, vamos, amigos. Let's go. Hola, Bernhard. Thanks for coming, amigo. Gracias. Thanks for your visit. Let me show you today my Lima. And we will explore together the architecture of the city. Oh, Darla, thanks for your... Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for, for your message. It really means a lot to me. And, and these different occasions, we do something in Lima and, and just having your company. I know there are so many wonderful tours happening in this moment at the same time in our platform in Hago. So it really means a lot to me that you choose this tour among so many other uh, that we have in the platform. And I know my colleagues, my colleagues are wonderful too. So, well... Today, we are going to explore the architectures of Lima. And this tour is going to be uh, sort of like a combined experience of a city tour, uh, like a street tour, and a lecture. Why? Because I have some images with me that I will show you. And we're going to be revising, checking the images um, while we, we walk and just to identify the different styles and give you clues and ideas um, about the origin of this style. So first of all, just a little bit of a historic frame for you all. Barranco is one of the 43 districts of Lima. Lima City, the capital of Peru, is divided in districts. Barranco is known as the Bohemian District of Lima. It's one of the oldest districts of the city. It was established as a district in the 19th century. And the origins of Barranco uh, are connected with the uh, 19th century trend of the Limanians, the rich Limanians, the people from Lima of that time, uh, to look for a sort of like a, a beach lifestyle, right? But the intention these people had was not going to the beach to 
to get a, a nice tan because back then in the 19th century, uh, being tan was not really the trend. Uh, being tan was connected also with the low income people. So uh, the intention of these rich families was not coming to Barranco to get a nice tan, was in fact to escape from the uh, terrible smell of downtown Lima, number one. The big cities uh, in Europe and also here in the Americas used to be very stinky. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about the 19th century, the open sewers in, in the cities were uh, impossible. So the rich people wanted to escape from that and they wanted to go to places which were Let's say a little bit better uh, ventilated, right? Also, another thing is the new trend that emerged in Europe um, of, of, let's say, this, this search for the um, benefits of the ocean water. So that's the time when the beach resorts emerge, right? Uh, thanks, Lou. Thanks for your question. What trees are these? Oh, the trees we have behind me, um, and you're going to see also lots of these trees constantly, are, uh, are local trees. They have a fruit here uh, that is called pacay. So these are the pacayales, by the way. You can see that. Can you see this, this sort of like a big, uh, like little, it looks like little trunks that are hanging, right? So those are the pacays. The pacay is a fruit that nowadays most people don't, even Limanians, modern people from Lima don't really know, uh, uh, but it's a local endemic fruit from Lima. So these trees are the pacayales. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for your question, by the way. Thank you so much. And by the way, to my friends from Canada, happy Canada Day. Uh, happy Canada Day. I know today is a very, very special day uh, for, for you all. So, so well, my, my love to all my Canadian friends in this special day. So we're going to start seeing. <laughs> you're welcome, amigos. You're welcome. You're welcome. July is also the month of, of Peru. Uh, on the 28th of July, we celebrate the independence of Peru. So I will be making something special for you. I promise. So let's start. <laughs> Gracias, Lou. Uh, we will we'll start with this, the houses because I have so many houses and I know your time is short. So I want to show you the highlights of, uh, of the houses in terms of houses of Lima. So, gracias, Darla. We have here this house. This used to be a house as well as the rest of the buildings you see here. Can you see? These were houses for the upper class families of Lima that escaped from the noises, the smells of downtown, and came to this section that is about eight kilometers away from the historic center. So uh, it was a long distance trip in horseback, one full day of trip to this zone. And well, uh, that was of course before the trams and the trains. The stuff you see here, uh, it's uh, most of these houses, by the way, don't have really clear uh, styles. To me, it, it recalls me a lot the Art Deco style. Uh, the Art Deco is a style that is connected usually with the 1920s. Uh, and it was uh, created uh, or was, uh, let's say, emerged in Paris. But it was in, in vogue until the 50s. Uh, in Peru, we had also different types of buildings that were uh, inspired in the Art Deco. For example, look at this. Uh, so we have the Hildemeister building from 1928 in downtown Lima and the most expensive uh, and fancier also uh, McDonald's we have in the whole city of Lima. That one is uh, very close, a couple of blocks away from the main square. So uh, what are the characteristics of the Art Deco? Uh, the geometry and the straight lines, uh, sometimes sharp edges, right? A classic, symmetrical and rectilineal aesthetic, right? So um, most of these houses have Elements that were just, just elements, uh, no, they are not entirely uh, of one fashion because we Limanians were very picky and we wanted to, to have more. We were, I think, we were very um, baroque. <laughs> we wanted over the top always, of, even until nowadays, we are a little bit like that. The next house over there comes from a different current. Although it is not a pure, the, the style I'm going to share with you, it has some elements that were taken from that style we are going to talk about. The style uh, that I see here, or elements of that style, is the Art Nouveau. 
right? So the Art Nouveau is characterized by the wavy line domain, asymmetry, dynamism, and especially the organic uh, elements decorating, for example, flowers. Can you see uh, the, this section over here, like this ribbon that's say decorating in the upper part? That is a uh, Art Nouveau a element that was taken here. But remember, this is not 100% uh, Art Nouveau. Um, we have in these two just little elements. So the Art Nouveau is a style uh, that became the trendy uh, in Lima, especially around the 1930s, 1940s. Um, also, another detail very interesting between the Art Deco and the Art Nouveau. The Art Nouveau is usually um, described as a very delicate, very feminine style. And the Art Deco, in the country, it is considered to be more sort of like masculine. I just want to give you this, um, let's say, postcard of the two here. This is a little introduction. I will show you better. And also, Adrian is asking for a zoom. Let's give her a zoom over here. And... Can you see these uh, organic elements, the flowerly elements, my friends? Ah, uh, so I think you can see it now. In comparison to these elements that are more like, uh, sort of like it feels like the um, Art Deco, right? Uh, here over the windows. So we're going now to the Zoom because we will keep walking. And I have lots to show you in this part. So the street we are in, is uh, called Paseo um, Sainz Peña. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Paseo Sainz Peña. Uh, so Sainz Peña, by the way, was a military, an Argentinian military who fought in the side of Peru during the time of the War of the Pacific. Uh, so uh, also known in Peru as the war with Chile because we fought uh, against the Chilean invasion uh, that finally, well, took away from us a big portion of territory. We're talking about the 19th century. Uh, during that time also, uh, the Chilean troops came to Lima. They took Barranco. They destroyed Barranco. So although Barranco was uh, or emerged as a beach resort for rich families, um, Unfortunately, we don't have architecture from before the war because the architecture was completely destroyed. So it's very sad, but we don't have 1850s, for example, or 1860s constructions. We have architecture of after the war. The war finished in the year 1884, so it was necessary to have some time for stabilization in the country. And later, uh, about a decade after, Lima, you know, go back to, went back to its uh, sort of like a, a little bit of the wealth uh, it had um, before the war. So we have here a style that I invite you also to analyze with me. I will give you just some seconds for you to give a look to this house and to tell me which style do you think is this house. I have already uh, some also uh, pictures of the style uh, that you see here in other parts of Lima. And I'm going also to uh, tell you in a moment what is the fashion, right? So. We can see, by the way, gracias, Lou, thank you. Uh, we are definitely in the right direction, my dear. <laughs> uh, it is indeed a style that is connected with France, and it's a style that is very sensual. Uh, it is very sort of like over the top, too, in comparison to other styles we will see. Satyam, thank you, Baroque. Also, we see the over the top, that's right. But I will give you now some pictures of buildings that are quite alike. And I will tell you in a moment the style again, right? So I have also a second cell phone for me to show you pictures. I hope you are uh, seeing the images very well. So this is the first photo studio of Lima, the Curret House. Look at these uh, elements that are, sorry, I'm going to put it away. Um, these are very organic elements. We have also another house. Look at this. We have this house, this is the house uh, a Rosel del Rio in Barranco, not far away from here. Also, maybe in another occasion, I will show you this one in person too. Uh, this is uh, another of these houses. So what is the style? This is, of course, uh, the Art Nouveau. 
This is the Art Nouveau in Lima. Remember, asymmetry and dynamism, wavy lines, eclecticism in part. Yes, indeed, although it is not considered the eclectic, later we're going to see eclectic, hmm? but it has the, uh, this, this sensual, this organic, these uh, natural forms, these flowers also coming out. This is um, classified as Art Nouveau, an interpretation of the Art Nouveau. Um, we have also another house that is here, very beautiful. <laughs> yes, Igor, this is one of my favorite. I think when I was uh, analyzing all of these houses and looking for the information, I was also looking for you know, which one. I, I was I was asking me which one is the style that I feel identify with, and at the end I came with the conclusion that uh, the Art Nouveau is is the style that represents me. Uh, it's I don't know why, but I feel a very strong connection with uh, that architecture. Very flowerly. I love flowers. And in a moment, I will tell you why flowers are also, a, or, or this uh, Art Nouveau, this flowerly style became very well accepted in, in Lima. This is going to be in just a moment. First, I want to show you this building. This is the Universidad a las Peruanas. It's a private university building. And you can see that it breaks completely <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the vibe, <laughs> the, uh, the style uh, uh, in, this, in this section. Um, unfortunately, well, uh, sometimes uh, we're given in, in historic sections permissions uh, to private uh, constructors to, to make uh, buildings which were not according to the style. Nowadays, we are more picky about that, uh, especially because all of these houses are considered to be patrimony of the district. Um, but well, we have here this this element that breaks completely the vibe. And also many of these constructions that you see in Lima that are made of cement, sometimes painted recently uh, um, white or any other color outside, originally were inspired in the brutalism, in the brutalism. Have you heard about the brutalism, my friends? Uh, it is a trend that also uh, came very strong in Peru in the 60s and 70s in particular. Yes, Atiam, yes, Igor, of course, no? brutalism, although many people uh, they don't feel very into brutalism, brutalism has its own beauty, uh, like, right, Lou? Uh, it has its own beauty, its own style. Um, this is not the, that's the ultimate example of brutalism, but in a moment I will show you more about this uh, constructions, the brutalism architecture in Lima, and we'll show you also some uh, images and give you some information about it. So remember, the brutalism came to Peru in the 60s and 70s, time when we had military presidents in Peru. So I think the idea of the cement, the simplicity, you know, the straight lines also became, um, well, let's say, a uh, uh, represented very well the militaries uh, ruling the country back then. And here we have, uh, uh, I'm seeing also some of the comments. Uh, yes, exactly, Vicky, of course, of course, in Peru with the military ruling. No? Uh, we have a monument to a famous neighbor of Barranco, who also is a recognized historian. He passed away uh, some years ago, but uh, he was a recognized historian. Uh, he was also principal of a school which existed in this same corridor, in this same um, zone where we are, and that we're going to see in a moment. The name of this personality was Dr. Gustavo Pons Musso. When we talk about Pons Musso in Peru, immediately it comes to our mind school books because he made several school books about history that we all in Peru, when we were children, we used to use, right? So Pons Musso had his own school here in Barranco and he was very much beloved by, by the Barranquinos. Uh, so the school San Julian, so this is the way how the school used to look like, right? In its best days, of course. And this is a little um, commemorative plaque um, of the disciples and the former students of this school. So we are going to give a look to the school nowadays. And probably the way how it looks nowadays, the house will not, uh, will not uh, cheer you up. But um, there are some reasons why the house, this former school, is in this condition. So first of all, let's go to see 
this fantastic construction, which now I'm going to ask you, which style do you think it is, my friends? Which style do you think this beautiful house, try, try to imagine it in its best days, in its glorious days, uh, is? So you can also comment. I'm seeing Satyam muy bien. Satyam, thank you so much again for uh, that great answer. <laughs> so yes, exactly. No other than Tudor. Muy bien. So what are the elements that are characteristic of Tudor, especially in, in, in Peru? What are the elements we copy the most uh, and by the way just to give you a, um, a, let's say an idea of how alien Tudor can be to Peru <laughs> because we uh, Peru is a country of different um, realities right but Lima in particular Lima in particular is a desert we don't get rain right we don't get any rain in Lima Ah, uh, Spires, thank you, Stephanie. Gracias, thank you, thank you. We're going also to, to check on that for our friends to, to know uh, th these elements. I have some pictures also with me too. So in Lima, we don't get any rain. So any snow, any rain, right? So these slow roofs that sometimes are 45 degrees uh, inclination are unnecessary in Lima. We just copy that style because we love it. Because uh, many Peruvians who lived in this part of Lima in the 19th, early 20th century, they traveled to Europe and they were fascinated with that style. So, uh, for example, uh, we can see the timber frame. Uh, the timber frame uh, that is uh, decorating the external, the, usually the top part of the house, is uh, the element uh, that is the most replicated. We also have, for example, the timber frame, as I said before. And in some cases also, we have even chimneys that are beautifully decorated with designs, right? So I will show you some pictures now. Would you like to see some pictures of, of uh, other Tudor houses in Lima? So let me show you here. So this house is in Lima, my friends. It's not in England. <laughs> this house is in Lima in San Isidro District. This one here is in Miraflores District. Look at the inclination of the slope roofs. Uh, and the styles that we replicated the most in Lima uh, were, uh, of the Tudor, the current Tudor, was either the modest uh, cottage style house Tudor, like the one you can see here, which uh, has this timber frame exposed, and also the palace style. Uh, uh, but of course, in bigger number, the cottage, the, the humble uh, Tudor style houses, right? So these are the, uh, the elements usually that you will see the most in the Tudor style. So let me tell you a little bit about the Tudor. Yeah, the Tudor well, is a style that well, originally uh, appear in in England in the 15th, 16th centuries during the uh, period, the time of the Tudor dynasty, right? Um, and it also is a style that uh, appear after the Gothic, is between the Gothic and the Renaissance style, right? Uh, the elements that are characteristic of the um, Tudor uh, are also uh, these, the ones that I'm going to show you in a moment. So let me just um, check on the picture, okay. So we have this balcony of a stone. This is typical of the Tudor style in Lima. The chimneys also with these beautiful decorations. Uh, are these also Stephanie the Spires? I hope I am, um, I am uh, also using the correct word. Let me know, please, my friend. And also this Tudor style arch that is very typical uh, as the, at the entrance of the houses. I hope I am uh, also, I'm not missing any special characteristic, but basically uh, these are the elements that we copy the most. Uh -huh. Ma, some Tudor copy early medieval. Yes, of course, Adrian, of course. Uh, remember, here in Peru, we had really not direct contact with with the uh, the English traditions or even the medieval uh, traditions besides what the Spanish influences that we receive which usually were the Moorish the Arab influence so later in the 20th century when we were starting to create our own identity as um, what we did was uh, instead of looking inside us <laughs> it's, it's very funny I always 
think about this like uh, the, the most obvious thing for me at least would be you know well, we're going to create identity we're going to look to our Incan past or our well our Spanish influence and making something new no what we did was copy Europe again <laughs> styles that were completely alien to us um, to create to start so, sort of like fresh again right because a Spanish style was considered to be related with the monarchy, so we didn't want it to be connected with the monarchy after the independence in 1821. And uh, the Incas were still not considered to be uh, that developed uh, as nowadays we, we know, because we, had, uh, we have decades of investigation over, over them, and now we are proud of being also indigenous. But back then, the story was different. Also, here this house, to me, it's a mystery, my friends. You will help me, I hope, with finding the correct name for this style. Because even in the, um, in the description of this house, the only information is, well, that this is an eclectic style house. Of course, it's not Tudor. Notice the difference I'm going to put in the position uh, of Tudor. But if you find, you know, a style that is sort of like a lie that you know that you have in mind, please let me know. Because uh, the information... It's not really clear. Most of these houses don't have really a, a information uh, about the, the origin uh, of the, the style in them, right? So look at this, my friends. Uh, it looks very like wavy and natural, but it lacks of the flowery elements uh, uh, that uh, we will expect in the, in the Art Nouveau, for example. No? So uh, it's, it looks like a cottage style, right? In part like Tudor, but the inclinations are not, uh, let's say, typical. By the way, the house is nowadays the residence of the Spanish ambassador in Lima. That's why we have the, uh, the Spanish flag here, right? A very, very curious construction indeed. A little Spanish influence. Well, uh, the house before the Spanish ambassador uh, belonged to a family. Also, uh, later, uh, the embassy came. Uh, it was not meant to be originally an embassy. Mm -hmm. So, we will now continue, my friends. And is that a building of the embassy of Spain? Oh, uh, I, yes, yes, uh, it's the, the residence, my dear Memphis, Paul Estefan. <laughs> so we are now going to continue and we are going now to look for other styles and this style my friends now we're going to cross the street first I want to I want to survive this tour so I have to look both sides and um, this style became the most um, diffused the most embraced style of Lima and I think uh, at the beginning of this tour, we were talking, or, or someone mentioned this style when we were referring to describing a house. This style is eclectic. Uh, the eclecticism arrived to Lima before the 20th century. Um, it became the trend, the trendiest style uh, in the 1880s, 1890s. It also became very popular before the war with Chile uh, in the 1870s. But, um, well, because of the war, we had to stop doing eclectic until a little bit later, of course, when we recover. This house, uh, which is the, so far I remember, Garcia Calderon house, uh, it belonged to a w wealthy family, a rich family. Most of the families that live here in this part were uh, made money from uh, the exportation of the guano. Have you heard about the guano, my friends? Ah, the guano is the, the poop of the seabirds and it was used as a fertilizer. It was a prime fertilizer that was sold very very expensive so uh, the people who were involved in this business made huge fortunes so that's how families like the Garcia Calderon family could afford to have a house like this one right uh, so this is uh, recognized as a eclectic style well we're going to continue also it has flowery details flowery styles the official description of the house is eclectic. So what is the eclectic and how the eclectic was received in Peru? 
So the eclectic, uh, while, while we are awaiting for crossing the street, <laughs> and, you know, in Peru, by the way, we, we have a really bad traffic and terrible drivers. So <laughs> they are very macho. So they usually don't wait for us <laughs> to cross. Okay, so we did it. Um, this, this hotel, this is a... a a boutique hotel. It belongs to the Relais and Chateau um, chain of hotels. So just to give you an idea how, how elegant, how fancy, we have lots of art inside that you can, if you, if you can afford, of course, you can buy. So uh, the house, the hotel is impeccable. It's really beautiful. So we're going across to show you better the facade of the uh, building. So I was saying that the eclectic style is the combination of classic styles. Uh, and in Peru, we receive this, this fashion um, not just because it looks really beautiful, uh, usually these this, um, compositions that were sort of like free also. Uh, um, the idea, the only rule was using classic styles, classic European styles, not Nordic, but basically Italian or French, uh, could be also Spanish. So um, we receive this style very happily because uh, to us, it was connected with France. And we were looking after the proclamation of the independence in 1821 to detach completely from Spain uh, and to embrace the ideals of liberty, uh, you know, of, of education, of an open world, an open country. So that's why this style became uh, very, very uh, much beloved in Peru. And it became also the official style of the government uh, at the end of the, let me show you some images, at the end of the uh, 19th century and beginnings of the 20th century. For example, there is a beautiful plaza very close to downtown Lima uh, that is called Plaza May the 2nd, 2 de Mayo, uh, that was finished in the year 1924. And look at those elements in the back part. Also, they uh, are typical from the uh, eclectic season, right? Um, also, we have another plaza, this one here. Uh, the runabouts, they're very, very typical of the French influence in Peru in that period of our history in the, at the end uh, and beginning of the 20th century, end of the 19th century. So uh, the boulevards also. This is the new ideal of a city, of an organized city in ah. Lima. We have uh, also, as a comparison to how used to be Lima before, the idea of the checkerboard, the distribution in the squares of the city. That was the, the plan of the Spaniards. That's the way how, oh, sorry, the way how the city looked like before the independence. And later, we opened the city with runabouts and boulevards. We have also some other important buildings, such as the... Uh, exposition museum from 1872 and this one is in downtown Lima the style of this construction is usually referred to the Venetian or Venetian style eclectic and Venetian style and look this one here this is the French palace the French palace right from the year 1919 oh Lou muchas gracias thank you for your support amiga gracias the eclectic also is quite a big box. Huh? Sometimes some ar architects refer to certain buildings are ecle as eclectic. Sometimes they refer to them as an Art Nouveau. So it's complicated. This one, for example, the Casa Sally Rosas in downtown Lima from 1910 has a combination of several styles. So, and it was valid also. Renaissance, Gothic, Venetian, Mudejar, which is the Arab in Spain, Art Nouveau and Baroque. So just to give you an idea of how big and wide could be this style, the, this, this um, eclectic, the eclecticism uh, in Peru, in Lima in particular. So, well, of course, we can identify here elements of the uh, Tudor. This is a house nowadays. This is a house. Um, also, in the Tudor style, uh, or the styles uh, that we recreated in Peru, uh, there were also other styles that look like Tudor, but they were not exactly Tudor. Um, for example... This is another construction. One day I will show you because I have a plan to take you to a really nice park there soon. This is the Basque style, Nordic European. 
And what is the big difference? It's not really big difference or very easy to notice. Or to, it's not noticeable. The element between uh, that is here that is not in the Tudor style is the stones that you can see in the bottom section, right? Those stones are uh, decorative elements in the base, in the bottom part of the house, are what we uh, identify as the Basque style or Nordic European, right? So we will continue walking, my friends. I have some other houses to show you at this point. Mm -hmm. So, oh, thank you, Darla. Do you know you can download your pictures? Yes, I think, I think there is a new system. I was very uh, disconnected with the website doing like street tours, like city tours outside um, and especially using the new platform because there were some problems with the new platform for streaming. I was using the old one. But now I am getting to know that there are many <laughs> new uh, gadgets in, in, the, in the new site and it's working good. By the way, are you, are you um, seeing everything? Were you had it, uh, having any, any problems with the connectivity? Just let me know if everything is all right. And um, I'm going to be also next time adding more pictures. Gracias, Atiam. That's so good because I was a little bit worried about <laughs> using the new platform. Uh, but well, now I will keep doing it. <laughs> no, gracias, Darla. Thank you. I'm sorry for well, still using well, a second cell phone. Um, now technology also is improving so fast, especially in Hago, right? So this building uh, who can also tell me which style you think is this one my friends i know you are well traveled people or you uh, are very curious and you've seen different styles in in the world in your cities so i will show you in a moment what is the style uh, that is here but i want just a moment for you to analyze this style this fashion mm -hmm. Oh, gracias, Igor. Gracias. Thank you. Thanks for your work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy you are having a fun time. Uh, so this style uh, is also um, connected with the period of the history of Peru when we had military presidents. And by the way, the building we see nowadays is uh, nowadays the Asociación Mutualista de Técnicos Insufio Oficiales de la Fuerza Aérea del Perú. What is uh, this association of the technicians, and, so, um, let's say officials of the uh, Air Force, the Air Force of Peru, Fuerza Aérea. So this is a military building. And I think the style, the name of the style matches uh, really good with the the, the, the core uh, of, of this, um, let's say, uh, of, of the military life and the military tradition. The name of the style you see here is Brutalism, my friends. This is the Brutalism. So the Brutalism, many people uh, like smiles and giggles when they hear the word Brutalism because it usually is connected with uh, the, the word, or the first word that comes to you is brutality, right? So, or, or brutally something, right? But brutalism, let me tell you something. Uh, it comes from a, a, a phrase a, in, in, Fran, in French that is Breton Brut. Breton Brut means raw concrete. So Breton Brut was the, uh, the name that eventually became brutalism right so what are the elements uh, of the brutalism that that make it uh, such a such a trend such a style that has been also uh, embraced everywhere around the world uh, the breton brut yes yes lou exactly uh, that's the that's the way how i find it also uh, in in um, in different documentaries i was able to to see to prepare this tour um, so it means Breton Brut raw concrete. So, um, and that's because it was made of cement, simple, with no big external decoration or paintings or, or nothing. So, uh, the reason why the brutalism emerged uh, is, of course, the Second World War. 
So the Second World War um, and the destruction that happened in different parts of Europe uh, also uh, demanded the architects to be creative and to um, use resources that were limited to reconstruct the city, especially uh, to create um, uh, units uh, for, for middle class families to live and, and new buildings. So this is why the brutalism became a uh, such simple, no? honest, no? Um, uh, uh, straight lines, right? Materials uh, that are also uh, affordable. Um, but in some parts of the world, people don't like brutalist uh, style because sometimes it doesn't age well. Uh, in Lima, well, our good luck is that because we don't get any rain, uh, brutalism is, is sort of like frozen in time. Right, so it doesn't change. It's not really damaged because we have no rain. Um, so well, this is this is the reason why brutalism became also so well accepted in Peru. And we have several buildings that are brutalism. Let me let me show you once again uh, the images I have with me. For example, this one here is a uh, building that belongs to the company, the national company that uh, sells petrol, Petro Peru. Right. We have the Sheraton Hotel and the Civic Building in downtown Lima. These are 70s, of course, right? Brutalism. Oh, we have also here the Sheraton Hotel. By the way, the Civic Building, which is this one here, the big one, uh, was the biggest building, the tallest building of Peru in the 1970s. It has 100 meters uh, high. It, nowadays, it's the third highest building of Peru. Right. Look at also the, the fascinating lines and designs of the brutalism that we have here in, in Lima and even a building that is like a rocket. Uh, so this is brutalism again. Right. Uh, usually 60s, 70s and 80s. But we still also have some architects who really love brutalism and consider um, a style that is uh, so um so trendy, right? Um, we have also other house here that I want to show you. Uh, this house, I've been looking a lot about, um, you know, the, the, the interpretations of each houses. Unfortunately, as I said before, I was not able to find um, official information about the styles. So I had to deduce a little bit. And I'm sorry if I'm mistaken with, with some of these styles. I am not an architect. I am a tour guide. But um, I, I think it's fascinating seeing uh, these, these houses and, and trying to understand uh, the history of them. Um, so we have here a house that is considered or described as eclectic. Um, so, of course, the eclectic box is huge, right? <laughs> but the, look at this style here. Gracias, Lou. Gracias, gracias, amiga. We have here a house that in one side, look at this section, in this side is completely square. It has straight lines. And this section is circular, right? So it's a unique house. We don't have anything like that in Lima besides this house here that is unique and is also considered a patrimony of the district, a monumental patrimony of the district. Oh, let's go also to a corner so just to see the edge on this section. So you can see that it's completely round. It's completely round in the front and has this decorative element. And we know that once, long, long time ago, this house from the first and second floor had a view straight to the ocean. Now, this house don't have any view to the ocean because there is a big new block of constructions of houses in this section. So the view is gone, right? But uh, that's the way how it used to be. Reminds me of a palace. Yes, of course. Remember these this people here in Lima? These rich people, they were living uh, their best lives. They were living lives of the royals in Europe uh, most of the time because of the money that they made from the guano. And this house, look at this one here. It looks very, uh, well, of course, you can deduce it, right? What style is the one you can see here in this house? Uh, please analyze it for a little time. I'm sure... Satyan has the answer <laughs> ah, because he already 
recognize a house quite alike and similar uh, during the tour. So this house nowadays is a, a office, uh, is a office um, of architects. Um, it's located, of course, in, in, in a part that is a dream, right, for anyone to live in, in here. Uh, Barranco is nowadays very expensive. Again, it's a very expensive land, uh, real estate. And, uh, well, uh, the houses here are, are, are sometimes nowadays very expensive. Also, they devaluated for a moment and then, well, the prices went up again uh, uh, about 10 years ago. So, these elements you see here, I want also to show you a picture uh, of the elements that you will see in this house for you to do your own analysis, right? So, what is this? Okay. Okay, so we have uh, elements that also I'm showing you here in pictures taken from houses in, in, uh, in Europe, right? So look at this balcony, for example. Oh, we can see the balcony right here. It's exactly the same. Can you see it, my friends? Uh, there you have it. Of course, not of a stone, in this case of concrete, uh, because it's sort of like a neo, right? It's a neo too. All of these styles are neos in a way. We have also, look at this arch over here. We've got a little, you know, higher section in the center. So we have here, aha, uh -huh. look at this. And we have up there, the chimney also decorated, uh, really fancy. So let me show you once again here, right? So what is the name of this style, my friends? Uh, is da -da -da Tudor, Tudor style, my friends. This is the Tudor fashion in Lima. Uh, the families of Lima were uh, investing fortunes to, to build houses that emulated the European ones they possibly saw in trips when they were uh, far, far away in, in those locations. So it's really curious to see how much they invested to create these houses. And of course, these houses were meant to be houses forever. There's another Tudor house over there in that section, right? So it was not a unusual, sorry, uh, unusual style for, for this part. But we were just able to see some of the, hit the highlights, let's say, of the architecture of, of Lima. So these houses were meant to be forever. And the good news is that the houses you see in this moment are uh, protected nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, um, Badad, you call Tudor from 15th century, actually originates in... The, oh, interesting, Bernhard, interesting. Let, that is wonderful to know because, well, the information uh, I have uh, is that, you know, it's inspired in the, in the Tudor style, uh, the time of the Tudor dynasty, 15th, 16th century. But now, I have enlarged my knowledge because now I know it also comes from Northern Germany. Gracias, amigo. Thank you, thank you. And, well, indeed, um, I am also learning and I'm checking on Wikipedia. Oh, you're also checking Wikipedia? Yes, I will. I will. Uh, the Fatch Week. Also, uh, and my friends, if you want to also get to know a little bit more about, for example, the Tudor, the origin, uh, uh, here my friend Bernhard has uh, shared uh, some information to also look in the internet. I am every day learning something new and also I love to do these tours because when I do these tours, when I create these events, I learn something. Uh, oh, I am always learning and also sharing with you all what I'm learning. So thank you so much my friends for your participation and thank you so much for coming to Lima today. I will also Take you to see the beach before we finish this event before we we pack up everything and close the event just to show you how beautiful uh, the view is even though we are in winter uh, we are in in the winter days uh, the opposite to you in the north hemisphere if you are in the north hemisphere uh, but also winter can be very beautiful for us winter uh, is uh, sort of like the equivalent of gray uh, it gets very gray. The sky gets gray because we get very humid in Lima, a lot of high humidity. So the uh, way how the ocean looks is, of course, a reflection of the sky. The, it's like a mirror, the ocean. This is the Pacific, by the way. 
we look directly to the Pacific. Um, so that's why the city has this sort of like uh, veil of mysteries covered with this gray veil, which is also very romantic. Um, so we, we really like that, especially in the afternoons, in the winter afternoons when we come with our loved ones to the ocean and just spend a nice time uh, here relaxing. So this is the way how the ocean view is in Lima City. Um, Lima is the only capital in South America, capital of a country in South America that looks, faces directly to the ocean. There is no mountain range between the downtown of Lima, the center of Lima and the ocean. The people in the colonial times used to see from the rooftop of the churches in downtown Lima, the ocean. So that's what makes very special Lima. So I really hope you enjoy this tour. Linda, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Darla. It helps me a lot to continue creating these events, to continue doing this at these activities for you and, and taking you to see different places and, and also uh, dedicating also the time to, to create new uh, events because um, I am not repeating my tours. Uh, I decided to do always unique different events. It's not easy, of course, because there is a moment when you run out of ideas. So that's why I will ask you a big favor. Uh, at the end of this event, you're going to be given the chance of commenting about the tour. And if you would like me to do a, an event in the future about something, about a theme, um, about a, just give me ideas. So in that way, I can create more content that is unique and different for you all. So muchas gracias. Thanks for your visit. Gracias, Bernhard. Gracias, amigo. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Vicky. Happy Canada Day, by the way, <laughs> to you again. Thanks to the new friends that are coming. Also, I'm, I'm seeing some friends that are revisiting. Liza Tiam, I miss you a lot. Thanks for coming again. And also new friends that are here also uh, joining and supporting. Uh, by the way, as you know, these tours are free tours. Uh, they are just tip supported. So if you have the possibility uh, to support this tour, I will highly, highly appreciate it. Uh, it's not an obligation, of course. Uh, I really value your presence. But if you have the chance, well, let me thank you deeply uh, for, for that help because you are not just helping me. Uh, all the tips are immediately split with Hego for Hego to continue also keeping this platform free uh, and open for everyone to join. All right. So muchas gracias. Gracias, Satyam. Gracias. Thanks for your support. If you want to know how you can support this tour, I will uh, activate a button that will uh, guide you into how to tip. Uh, uh, so, well, you, you will have all the information there. So, best to you all. Have a lovely day. Tomorrow I have another tour. If you want to see a garden, a park, very beautiful, new in Lima, come. Uh, I will be waiting for you all. So, um, well, see you, see you. And, well, if you can, give me a follow so you can also have information of my upcoming tours. Have a lovely rest of the day. Gracias, Jana. Thank you. Thank you, amiga. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Vicky. Gracias. Thanks for your support and for your love. Have a lovely Friday. Enjoy Friday. It's Friday night. Woohoo! <laughs> so it's party night. So bye bye, amigos. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.